or are you running a business? Valuation is the ultimate KPI. Hey there, it's Mike Langford. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast brought to you by Truelytics, the one and only comprehensive advisor transition management platform. This week on the show, I'm joined by Shauna Mace, a growth consultant and coach for financial professionals and RIA firms. And look, Shauna comes at this with a wealth of experience. When I actually first met Shauna, and I've known her for a little while now, she was doing this as the executive director of sales strategy and analytics for a large asset management firm that happened to be a client of Truelytics. And so Shauna and I had quite a bit of interaction and she told me, she's like, listen, I'm leaving. I'm going to start my own firm. Congratulations. And we kind of stayed connected after that and had a couple of conversations. And I knew at some point in time, I was going to want to have Shauna on the show. She's just incredibly smart. She has a lot of good stuff to say, and I can tell she's doing great work for her clients, right? Because She's focusing on that that connection between marketing and sales and making sure you get your process nailed so you can accomplish your goals. Because a lot of times, like translating like what's happening in your head and what you're saying on the piece of paper for your goals, it's it's not always as easy as you think to do. And, and I think everybody can appreciate that. We all have those goals where like, yeah, it seemed good at the time to say we're going to do this, but we can't really get it done. So anyway... A little bit of time went by. I was thinking about it, like, what are, what are we going to do with you know, having getting Sean on the show? And then she writes this blog post that just kind of hit me because it speaks to some of the stuff that I think about fairly frequently from a different angle. But she, the blog post is titled The Downside of Thinking Big, Think Small to Grow. And I'm always reminded of the story of Lance Armstrong and the team discovery. And before you give me a bunch of crap about Lance Armstrong's advantage was chemistry, right? Uh, Everybody was doping in the Tour de France. But take that out of it. One of the things that is undeniably true about the victories that Team Discovery had and team uh, the Postal Service uh, team as well is they they started looking at things a little bit differently. They started looking at making very small improvements on the bikes. They started looking at, you know, stiffening the frame, uh, changing the pedaling cadence, about changing the position of the the rider in the seat and how he was you know angling his hands and and so forth, and started changing the shape of the helmets and and some of the uh, the materials that we use on the bike. And every time they made these little tiny changes, they might have picked up a you know couple of seconds here or a quarter of a second even sometimes. It's really microscopic changes, but you make these little changes, they all add up over the course of a two thousand mile race to minutes, right? And one could also say some small changes with better chemistry, right? They, everybody was doping. They just had better chemistry than their competitors. Anyway, I love the story. There's a documentary on it at one point in time about Lance Armstrong and the, and the, the, the team discovery and, and some of the things they looked at for the first time, like legitimately putting riders in a wind tunnel. Anyways, enough of my rambling about that. When Shada wrote this blog post, I saw it and it was a big aha for me. Had to get her on the show. So you're going to love it. She's incredibly... Uh, fun to talk to, really smart, got some great, awesome stuff to share with you. Uh, before we jump into the podcast with Shauna, I want you to go ahead and check out one of the latest episodes of the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast produced by Matt Halloran over there at Top Advisor Marketing, as you check them out at Top Advisor. Uh, Jeremy Carnell, Chief Operating Officer and President of Truthalytics, was just on with Matt for an episode of the show Uh, and a really, really engaging episode. And you really get a feel for everything that the team is working on at Truelytics and what they're doing and and working towards to try to help you build a better and more efficient business and to help you grow and retain your advisor population if you're on the enterprise side. So really good stuff. Do check that out. Also next week, uh, be on the lookout for an episode of the RIA Compliance Collective podcast with Ivan Barreto and one Terry Mullen is going to be uh, joining that podcast with Ivan. So I can't wait to hear how that comes out. I've known Ivan for years. Actually, Ivan was on this podcast a little while ago, I think really early off in, in the podcast. So you go check that out. And then lastly, uh, we're recording an episode with Terry Mullen and Scott Wetzel over on the Advisor Financing Forum 
podcast. So you see, like this concept is growing. We're trying to get out there and get the word growing and help you uh, get more content that is meaningful to you and your business. So uh, expand your listening reach here. And then uh, if you hear something that's really interesting, let us know. We'll make sure we get a, a mention on this pod because we want everybody to get more good stuff for their business. Okay, let's get to it with Shauna Mace, S-H-A-U-N-A, Mace, M-A-C-E, dot com, if you want to learn more about Shauna. Okay, let's do it. Here's Shauna. Well, Shauna, thank you so very much for joining me today. I have been looking forward to having you on the show for quite some time now. So welcome to the Modern Financial Advisor podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, I'm excited to to be here. Yeah. I, you know, it's really interesting. You and I connected back when you were working at your old employer. And then I found out you were leaving and starting your own thing, which is awesome. And we had, you know, a, just a conversation between the two of the two of us. You reached out like, Hey, can we jump on a call and just kind of chat about business? And we did. And I'm like, Oh, we really hit it off. Great chemistry, super smart. Want to have you on the show. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I'm like, what would I have Shauna on the show for? What will we talk about? And I just kind of set the the database cranking. You know what I mean? How you do like oh, that moment's going to come. Right. And then you wrote this fantastic blog post that I happened to see on LinkedIn. And the post is on your site, shaunamace.com. And it is titled, The Downside of Thinking Big, Think Small to Grow. So that was... I'm like, let's dive in. That is a great <laughs> podcast concept. So let's go with this. So I loved it so much. What inspired you to write that post? Yeah. So it's funny. It's a lot of how I think about business world, but I think part of it's also with everything going on in the world today, you know, we've all had digital marketing ramped up on us, you know, as, as consumers and I, there's so much to do. It's almost overwhelming. As a business owner, there's so much you can do. It's overwhelming. And I think, you know, what I've always found in business is simplicity is really most effective. And especially especially when it's thoughtful, when it's targeted, when it's others focused. And so, you know what? I'm like, you know, this is what I do in my own practice. This is what I do in my own business. And this is the advice that I give to people is, you know, it's really about the small things. So it just, it just was, it's how I live my life and how I, how I, run my business. And I just felt like it was like the right time with everything going on in the world. Like simplify. I like that, you know, the coming at it. And that's some of the, that is some of the most uh, universal business advice you often hear, especially in the startup world, right? Is solve your own problem and then help customers if, look for people who are, have similar problems. And it, it sounds like some of that was really coming through in the post. Now, you have a new firm, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of the podcast. You must be putting a lot of this into practice. You, you mentioned you do mm -hmm. because you know you recently left a role at a very large asset management firm. And as somebody who, in my career, had left a really big firm to start my own thing, I know that sometimes that adjustment can be challenging and, and somewhat overwhelming. So, how are you? How are you doing so far? Yeah, no, I'm I'm doing I'm doing really well. I mean, I I I really loved my past experiences and great relationships, but there was always something inside of you know a, a little inner voice saying you need to do this. And you, you know, for me, I spent my first half of my career at an REA and then at the asset manager, and I was really ready to get back to that that space, get a little closer to definitely closer to the advisor and and closer to the end investor where I think there's real impact as far as the work that, you know, that we do in financial services and, you know, how am I doing? So obviously the world's crazy and I've really had to take my own advice. And, and initially I didn't, of course, like most people, and it was overwhelming. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And then I'm like, no, you know what to do, that this is what, this is what we do. We just, we, we, we have the goals of course, but then how you, you got to break it down into something that's sustainable and scalable. And so I started to do that. And really, I did actually build out very small goals. And, you know, things have been going really well ever since. And it just feels good to keep kind of knowing what I need to do each morning and just chipping away at it. And I feel, you know, I feel good knowing I have a plan. I think that's, that's the, 
and I feel like I'm in the right direction. So things definitely are going, going well, but in the beginning it's, yeah, it was overwhelming for sure. A big change to go from a team of people and lots of resources to yourself and, you know, much limit, much more limited resources and even just interacting in the world as it is today of uh, having to figure out how to build those resources and infrastructure around, around myself again, but it's been a fun journey so far. That, that's so great to hear. You know, it, it's, I remember the shock value for me was like little things like, Hey, the printer is out of toner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not just a supply closet that has new toners in it. I actually have to order toner for my printer. Now I don't print much stuff nowadays, but back in those early days after I left Fidelity, that's, that was kind of the, the shock stuff. Like, oh, I've, I've got to do like all the little things that I really took for granted that were there in the office and just ready to rock and roll for me. I've got to take the mantle. And, and I love your advice though of, of like, hey, look, just focus on the small little simple things that will help you make progress. Granted, if I could, if I could find an IT person, that would be, that's something I still would really like. <laughs> I really miss, her, you know, having an <laughs> IT person down the hall or being able to call someone that I certainly, I certainly miss that part of it. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, that the, I've had a few different tech problems over the years that have been, and I'm, I would say on the, you know, intermediate close to expert level for, from when it, when it comes to tech, right? I'm really confident with it. I've been tinkering with stuff since computers first came out and I was early adopter for, you know, all your stuff that we, we take for granted today, you know, email and, and web and, and social and all that type of stuff. So I, I usually come at something like, well, I can solve this, but every once in a while I run into something. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, how the heck do you fix this problem? And right. you, your point, like having a tech person at the house would have been great. <laughs> Right. Some things you just need to delegate sometimes. Yeah. So thinking about your clients, you know, you, because of your experience, you worked at an RIA, you were just at a, as I mentioned, a large asset management firm for seven years or so. You know this space incredibly well. How are you using some of this stuff to to help your clients grow their business? Yeah. So what, you know, I love the RIA space. I felt like when I was there for the first part of my career, I had I definitely drank the Kool-Aid. So I mean, there's definitely a level of just like passion for solving problems, helping investors fulfill their dreams. And what I realized in my experience, marketing and sales is really my background, is that whether it's at an RA firm or an asset manager, I think that something that a lot of businesses struggle with is the connection between marketing and sales. And, you know, there's a lot of great marketers out there. And I wouldn't call myself a marketer necessarily, you know, where my kind of expertise lies is really in the sales operations, implementation, bringing things to life, change management. And I think it really comes down to connecting the marketing efforts, making sure they're relevant, making sure that they are focused on, you know, the right, the right people in the right ways. And then, and then what happens when you get a lead? Like then what? And, and a lot of that I, I recognize is something is, is kind of is not focused on as much with REAs and advisory businesses. And I think a lot of it's just because small businesses, there's a lot that they have to do. There's a lot they're focusing on. And, you know, of course you want to get new leads, but there's this really important step of like what happens once you get the leads and, and how do you continue to sell and progress and convert clients, even once they become clients to advocates and how do you really start to generate referrals and like, and there's no cookie cutter answer every business is different, but I, I saw this gap in the market. Um, not so much marketing. I think there's a lot of marketing and great marketers out there, but really around like the, then what the, the development, the sales operations, the back end, the systems, the processes, the mindset, you know, I don't think many advisors are comfortable selling and yet they work with people every day. So how do we, you know, how do we develop some of those skills? So it's less about selling and more about adding value and, and really being proud about the work that you're doing. So it's really helping, helping advisors become confident in their sales process and also in their, and their team's ability to sell. I really like that, that concept and because it is really true. I mean, first of all, you hit on something that often it's overlooked, I think is RAA firms are really small businesses in right. almost every case, right? There, there are a handful of very large RIA firms. But for the most part, 
we actually did this analysis not uh, not too long ago with the Trulytics team that the average number of advisors at an RIA firm, both state and federal uh, SEC registered, it's like 2.8 advisors yep. at a firm on average, yep. right? So that's, and then it's, it's something like just under five employees on average, right? And that's across the entire population of you know 15,000 plus firms. So when you think about that, most of those folks didn't come at the business thinking about all of these really, as you say, you know, int- intricate uh, process thought processes. <laughs> a lot of processes in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> they they did. They're not thinking about studying the business and 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 working on operational aspects of the business, as you mentioned, sales operations uh, of translating marketing into sales. And, and what do we do when a lead comes in? How do we process that lead? How do we nurture that lead? How do we have a system for nurturing referrals and so forth? And it's just, it, it's in part because when you're in a small business and as you're growing that small business, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, there's somewhat of a hold on to the ride. Right? The, the, everything starts coming at you, you have to do everything. And then, so some things just kind of fall by the wayside. And sometimes it takes a little while for you to recognize, you know what, we should have a process for something like this. We should start thinking a little more in detail about this thing to, to help us move forward. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, it's funny. I think these things are, they can be nuanced and in some cases it's just like developing the right culture and habits, you know, and, and a lot of, a lot of times the systems exist. It's just how do we use the systems? How do we make sure everyone's consistent with questions that are asked or data that's gathered in or intentional about how we service, intentional about how we, we repackage the content we have, the marketing that we have, or the thought leadership we have. Yeah, I think it's, it is definitely, it's, it's a good problem to have if you mm-hmm. <laughs> are having problems with your pipeline. But I think it's also like if you're spending money on marketing, on any marketing or even time, you know, time is money. You're spending resources on marketing. You know, I hope, and I, what I see is that it doesn't happen. It's, it's often not the case, but I hope that people also are thinking about the, what happens once I get a lead. So how, how do I give myself and my team the best opportunity to convert that lead into a potential client or at least give them a great experience? So, you know, so they maybe, even if they don't become a client, even if you're not the right fit, they still have a good impression and, you know, who knows, maybe they, they do end up sharing uh, you with someone in their network. So how do you kind of, how are you always selling, but not so that it doesn't feel like you're always selling or how do you always promoting the business, supporting the business from a development perspective without it being another hat that you have to wear? Like, how does it become part of who you are and your culture? I think that's the goal again, to keep it simple. Yeah. I, I like that. You know, one of the things that you made me think of there was, you know, another thing that gets overlooked is how long the sales cycles can be right. for RIAs. You meet somebody today and that person might go, Shauna, you're the best financial advisor I've ever met. I love you. I would love to work with you. But that person may have all their assets tied up in their 401k plan or in a small business they own. They may basically have no investable assets for you to manage right now. And so as a result, even though they think you're amazing, so they're they're a great lead for you, they really have nothing to do. Right? You can't manage their money. Now, technically, you could take a financial planning fee and give them advice and, and have them as a client, but most RIA firms are looking to manage assets, and that's how they make their money. So what do you do? Do you just discard that person? Or as you're saying, do you have a process for nurturing that lead over the, what it might be five years, right? It might be five years before that person leaves their job or sells their business and has assets and and money in motion for you to manage. And I, I, I've noticed that goes overlooked all the time is that there's, what does that process look like? And the other thing you mentioned before is like many advisors and many RIA firms will tell you most of their business comes through referrals. Right. But if you were to ask, what's the process for generating referrals? There's a little bit of like, well, I'm not a, we, you know, we ask occasionally, right? There's not a, a truly formalized process there. So it's real, that's really interesting that you're focused on that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And I think that does come back to the like consist, like even just small, what feels like maybe a loss, you know, as long as you can kind of like 
because it does, if you don't get the business you're really excited about, or it doesn't work out, whatever, like, how do you sustain even throughout those small, like, we call them small losses? And I think that is where, like, the small goals start to help to keep you focused and motivated and engaged and, like, getting small wins as well. So it's not just like, oh, I missed this one. I don't know when my next up to bat's going to be. Well, and that's a that's a really good point, right? Like they they're they're small losses. It's not the end of the world. Although if you're at the beginning of your business and you're really really in need of sales to get things moving, getting clients in there, obviously every no feels like it weighs a thousand yeah, pounds. It might feel over like time once you have a book. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of a good bridge into one of the topics, one of the conversations you and I had uh, in prep for this this episode. You shared this really interesting story about simple questions that can help uh, in simplifying the process uh, of achieving a goal, right? Would you mind sharing that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is a story I read and I was really hit by. So the British rowing team hadn't won a gold medal since early, it's 1912, I think, early 1900s. And in preparation for, it was the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games, they developed a strategy that was really largely based in performance psychology. And they really focused on, you know, asking that they agreed to to ask this question about pretty much everything, small and big stuff. Will it make the boat go faster? And it gave them a framework to very quickly decide, is this going to help or is this not? And if the answer was was no, it's not going to make the boat go faster, then the answer was no. And if the answer was yes, then that's what they did. So I love that. And I love the simplicity of that. And I think that that's something that, you know, for advisors, it's like, what are those very short term goals? And how do you, it becomes very clear when you are very discreet, what, it, what is the right effort and what isn't. And I love that story. They ended up winning the gold. So it definitely worked. And they've really, I think, built their, built the team and they've, I think, continued to have a lot of success. But I, I love that simplicity in just like at the essence of, will it make the boat go faster? That was the goal. And that's what they focused on. I love that as well. Yeah. And and you can absolutely hear yourself asking the questions for an RIA firm, right? What will help you close more clients faster or something of that nature? Does this help us win new business? Does this help us expand share of wallet with our existing clients? As you look through all the things that you're doing, and if some of the answers are no, then you could ask yourself, can I do without that process, right? Or can I do more of that? And will it truly accelerate things? It's really interesting. It reminds me of the story that Steve Jobs told about why he decided to you know, start wearing the same black turtleneck every day, right? It was when he gets up, he doesn't have to waste time trying to decide what to wear. And time is our most finite, and most valuable resources. And that's true in every business. And if you're spending time on things that aren't producing the results that you you want, or that that's a distraction, right? And he also said it also frees up his brain power. Right. If you have to get up every day, think about what to wear, how much time do you spend standing in your closet going, all right, what's, what kind of day does it feel like? What's the weather like today? Whatever. But if you're putting on, for the most part, the same little uniform every day, and it doesn't have to be the same black film neck, obviously, maybe it's just the same type of clothing and you grab one and go, uh, that's huge, right? And so in a business, right. you know, that into other things, like you're saying with a rowing team, if this is not going to help the boat go faster, then, you know, we, we can ditch it, if you will, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that's, I think it's, yes, it's like, how do we simplify and, and cl- bring clarity to quickly to what matters? So is, yeah, is it going to, is this going to delight our clients? Is this going to be relevant for our target market? Is this going to add value? And that's one of the ones that I, I use on a daily basis is like, what I put out there in the world, is it going to add value? If the answer is no, then I, I'm not going to do it. And, and, and add value to the, you know, the audience I'm trying to serve and support. But yeah, I think that, yeah, if you, finding those kind of like, what are those key questions that really re- can really help support the larger goals is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. So what are like maybe three tips you have for advisors and RIA firms looking to grow through small changes, right? It, it, in your work with some of the businesses that, that are your clients, I'm sure there are a few common small changes that they can make that'll help get the ball rolling in the right direction. 
Yeah, I think, you know, the three things that I think are really important, one is, is to have a plan. And when I, pl- when I say plan, I mean, you know, have a, have clear clarity around your goals, like, m- like measurable goals. It doesn't need to be AUM goals. It can be, it doesn't have to be though, but be very clear with your, with yourself and your team, what matters, like as clear as you can be. And I think the more discreet, the better, if it is, if it is an AUM goal, then I think then I would ask you know, I would check in with myself and say, you know, why, you know, whatever the goal is, why, and make sure that the second thing is, is buy-in. So make sure the why, make sure your values as a, as an individual and as a business are aligning with the goals. Cause that's, I think what you, you know, when things do get harder, you need to have that buy-in. You need to have the values align so that you can keep going. And then the third thing is, is having feedback loops. So things aren't going to always work and that's okay. But understanding how to recognize quickly when you need to course correct or if things are going really well in a certain area, like amplify. So feedback loops, how you're doing, how you're doing with a certain group of your of prospects or clients, like that's so important. And that's something that I think is a big important part of any plan is like, okay, these are the goals. How are we going to understand how we're doing along the way? And that's, those I call them KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. That's that's the that's going to help you understand and again keep you motivated and engaged, and also help you understand maybe it's not going as well as I think. Let's dig in, maybe ask some more questions, uh, and or evaluate some more data and figure out how to refine and iterate so that you're not you know banging your head against the wall. But plan, buy in, and then feedback loops. I love that, that process. And, and it's really interesting that you mentioned KPIs because, you know, Truelytics, uh, has their true performance report and it provides 50 KPIs for individual advisors or, uh, RIA firms, depending upon how you're using the solution. And it also shows you how those KPIs roll up and affect your firm's valuation, right? So everything you do in business affects the valuation, it either makes your firm more valuable or it makes it less valuable. And when you look at all these different KPIs, whether it's from your, your, the business side or your client side, right, or, or in, in, in other aspects of the business, you can then look and say, okay, where are the things that are hurting my business? And where are the things that are helping my business? Where am I strong? And you can either choose to lean into those strengths, or if there's a weakness that's really kind of dragging you down, you can drill into that. And I think that's a really, really helpful way to go about it. And it, you know, it kind of reminds me of you know Tim Ferriss, author of the uh, Four Hour Work Week and other stuff, and he has a fairly popular podcast. I hear uh, <laughs> he, he has this. You may this, you may have heard of him. I, you may have heard of him. Tim Ferriss ever heard of him? You know, type, <laughs> type of thing. He, uh, he has this uh, thing. He talks about the the lead domino approach to making improvements, and it's you know what is the one thing I could do that would make everything else easier in my business. Right. What's the one little thing I could improve that would make everything? So you mentioned if AUM is the the goal, like the 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 firm wants to increase AUM by you know fifty million dollars over the next two years. Okay, what's the lead domino to making that process easier? Is it you're getting more leads? Is it you know getting those leads through the the process faster? Is it you know, higher quality leads or is it whatever the, the, the process may be or whatever the thing is, but examining that uh, it would be really, really helpful and make your life a lot easier in terms of achieving that goal instead of just sitting there going, oh my God, we need this giant mega plan for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I think I love that. And yeah, that's, I think that's totally spot on. It's like, okay, who's going to be, who's going to generate this AUM? How can I talk to those people more? Who's connected with those people? How do I get in front of them? What do they value? What are they afraid mm. of? How do I, you know, provide really content that is going to resonate with them? How do I connect with them? Like, there's so many questions I think you can start to ask to unpack the, how you're going to get to that AUM goal. And you can start to, you know, even just getting them all out as much as you can come up with, you can start to prioritize like, well, which one comes first? And then what does that, what's the goal there? You know, if it's, Maybe it's you're focusing on on dentists as a as a niche, 
or, uh, you know, widows. I think you had a podcast about widows. That was great about My niche marketing. Favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. focused on widows, which I think that's, I think niche marketing is great because it allows you to then get really specific around the value you add as far as content and planning resources and investment ideas and all that good stuff that makes you relevant. But yeah, you start to unpack the bigger goal into these smaller tactics and it becomes very clear. Okay, well, I really need to connect on LinkedIn to, I need to focus on, you know, if it's dentists, then it's on, on people who put themselves out to the world as dentists. Maybe it's in my area. Maybe I partner with, with somebody who also serves dentists, who's a professional relationship, a CPA or account. Like there's all these things. It starts to become very doable and very clear. And the goals maybe start in one place. And then as you make progress, they, you have to continue to er, evaluate and, and change, but it just, it flows. And I think that's the thing that why small, small goals are so powerful is it, it's just very clear what you need to do. It's that, I love that the lead domino, you know, things literally start to fall into place. It's true. It's, you know, it's really funny, like on the personal side of this stuff, I think you, it's really easy to see it, you know, have results, you know, the, because we're all living in this COVID-19, everybody at home all the time, life at the moment, you, you're seeing lots of people try new things and, and, and do new things. And, and I'm into fitness. And so one of the things I started doing was the 20 minute body weight only CrossFit style workouts. And it is truly amazing what 20 minutes a day with no weights involved, just body weight exercise, how much of an improvement and a reshaping your body in terms of adding strength. I'm 48 years old and I can rip off pull-ups now, like legitimate pull-ups, which couldn't do those before, right? But, and at first they were really hard. I had to use the, the there's a rubber band to assist, right? But doing it uh, a few times a week, that workout and other workouts spliced in, but only 20 minutes a day. I'm not killing myself and just like working out for hours on end and you know, throwing down all sorts of protein bars and all that type of stuff. It's just basically throwing in some legit exercises, things like push-ups, things like air, air squats. Amazing how much of an improvement. And you can, you know, extend that to other things that people are, are working on, but you see those improvements relatively quickly with little small changes. So I love the advice Absolutely. that you're giving in this area. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I love this idea of growth is not linear, but effort can be. And I think that you hit on that perfectly. Like you put in the effort, and you, that's what you can control. And yeah, the growth and what you, what comes out of it, you know, you maybe don't know, you don't always know what's going to come, but it's the thing you can control is the effort, which is truly, I think that's kind of the power you have. Yeah. Yeah. So let's shift get, uh, gears back to your, your, your business as we get ready to close out here, who is the right type of client for you? So if, if, and that's always a great question to, to ask of our, ourselves, but I like to make sure that anybody who gets on the podcast could, you know, tell the audience, like if, if this, you fit into this bucket, you should be calling Shauna, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the right type of client for you? Who's, yeah. So I definitely focus on RAs. Typically it's going to be, I would say definitely people who are doing marketing or thinking about doing marketing to grow their business. So people who are looking to, to grow their business and hopefully have some goals, maybe they don't, we can help refine those. REAs. And then also, you know, there are some financial professionals. I mean, my background is asset management. So people who serve REAs and serve advisors, that's definitely an area that I've also can help with just because I know the, know and love the REA market so well. But people who are really, truly looking to unlock potential, like it's the people, it's those people who know there's more, who haven't, figured out how to how to make that next leap, but are really ready for the transition, uh, ready to do not just the marketing, but to do some of the, the the growth work, the mindset stuff, and the business work to to make progress towards the goals, even if they don't know exactly what those goals are yet, but they're they can they know that inside there's there's something bigger there. So yeah, as a consultant and coach, it's really those those people who are ready to unlock unlock their potential. That's, that's great stuff. Wonderful. I'm sure we're going to have some people who want to reach out to you who uh, kind of fit that mold and have questions or want to explore potentially working with you. What's the best way for someone to follow up with you? The best way is to visit my website, which is my name. So www.shaunamace.com. And of course I post lots, you know, I post lots of stuff on LinkedIn. So I love connecting with people there. 
Uh, I try to I try to add value every day. That's one of my small goals specifically for that audience. But shawnamace.com is the best place to reach me. Great. Wonderful. By the way, I love you on LinkedIn. You do a fantastic job. There's always something good to, to see there. So uh, reach out to Shauna on LinkedIn. Make sure you follow her or connect with her if it's appropriate and uh, like her stuff, share her stuff because that's really good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, Shauna, I really enjoyed having you on the show. This was truly a, 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 pl- a pleasure for me because I like to learn a lot. And I also like to think about this this process for myself and my business and and, and I hope that listeners got a lot out of this. So thank you. I hope you're uh, doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And yes, I hope that uh, your listeners got some value as well. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Modern Financial Advisor podcast. Such a delight to have you. And it was a wonderful delight to have Shauna on the show. Uh, I have a feeling at some point in time, she'll be back on the show because she's really doing some really exciting and engaging things. She was so much fun to have, uh, and she's incredibly smart, as you can tell. So uh, awesome stuff there. As always, make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you like to get your podcast jam on, and leave us a comment and give us a share on the socials. We'd love to hear from you. So swing by Truelytics on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, um, yeah, the YouTubes, right? Wherever you like to uh, hang out online, Love to hear from you and send in your questions and suggestions for a guest. You can reach out to us at podcast at truelytics.com or again on the socials or swing by truelytics.com and just use a little contact form there and you'll get right with somebody. Okay. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Make sure you wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance and personal favor to me. Be nice to each other. Okay. We'll see you next time on the Modern Financial Advisor Podcast. See ya. Bye.